Hi guys, my name is Jackson. I'm reporting for Huru Media. Please remember to subscribe. We went all the way to meet someone, a very important person, a motivational speaker. I came to meet Kelly Inspiration. You probably heard something about that, but you don't know the person behind it all. Leo sasa ni wataka mjue Kelly Inspiration ni nini na mani nani. Hi Kelly. Hi. Um, welcome to Huru Media. Thank you so much. So, I um, would like to know more about you. We've yes. Had a, we have, we've had a lot about Kelly Inspiration. Oh, yes. We've seen your motivational uh, speeches. You, we've seen so much work that you're doing. So, to start with, uh, we would like to know a little bit about you, then we get back, we get into more details. Yes. Uh, like the name suggests, Kelly Inspiration. I'm an inspirational speaker. I'm also an actor and a team building expert. But normally, I'm known by two, uh, that is inspiration, you've seen my videos here and there and as you watch my videos majorly my main objective is to transform lives, yes, uh, I also act, I'm an actor that is. Okay, yes. uh, so should we call you Kelly Inspiration or is there another name that people would, you would, wouldn't mind telling other people? My full name is Ezekiel Kelly Odongo. So I chose Kelly and added inspiration as my stage name. Yes. Well, nice to meet you, Ezekiel Kelly Odongo. So which part of the country do you come from? I hail from Homa Bay County, uh, specifically a place called Oyukis. So Kelly, being a motivational speaker, an inspirational speaker, did you go to school to study that or what's your education background? Well, I studied BCom at Kenyatta University and I specialized in procurement. I first did accounting, but I left accounting uh, for a number of reasons. I think I was pursuing title, but I later, I later realized accounting was not in my blood <laughs> in any way. So I went and did procurement. Uh, but speaking, you know, I've been very passionate about speaking ever since. In fact, I never knew what I wanted, but I felt like I wanted to change lives uh, through speaking. So I remember was when I was in KU, I would, uh, I would go out of school whenever I didn't have classes. I would go to Gidurai to look for schools to speak for free. You know, some, uh, some teachers would look at me and how come, can you speak to our students for free? It means maybe your quality is low or something, but some would allow me to speak. So I started speaking in high schools that way. After some while, I joined various clubs. That is now second year. I joined various clubs and we'd be invited to speak to uh, high schools in various schools. And at least from there, we'd be given something small, something small. Yes. Well, uh, I think you've answered my next question. I wanted to ask you how you started the journey of inspiring, in, of, of, um, inspiring other people, talking to other people. I'm sure you've been there for quite a while now. I'm sure you've faced a number of challenges. I'm sure you've achieved a lot. Would you like, would you kindly tell us about uh, how you started the journey, the challenges you faced and maybe the achievements you've had so far? Now, uh, as much as I started this uh, from first year in the university, but the point, I mean, the point I can say I really started speaking well was, um, you know, I joined church. That is from first, second year university. I got a mentor. Uh, this, this guy came to speak in our school and there were posters all over. So normally students are very curious. So I saw this poster and I said, wow, this guy looks like Piero Lumumba. And then I used to love Piero Lumumba, seriously. So then I said, let me go and see what this guy is speaking. And the topic of was how to change Kenya 10 ways in 10 years. And the name was Eric Israel Okeri. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, let's go and see what this guy is saying. So we went, to get, we went there with my five friends. You know, then I used to have a forest of human beings walking around me every now and again because yeah. I was humorous and people used to like sitting around me and the rest. Yeah. So we went there. To our dismay, there was prison worship. I was wondering, huh? how come an is and a, a conference has turned to a church. Mm -hmm. So I left those places. And I don't want to, this issue of speaking or church and the rest, let them keep off. Mm -hmm. So later I came back later on and this guy spoke in a way I'd never heard before. So from there I started following his pastor. And the one that mentored me and did you not know, mentor me and taught me many things. And from there I started speaking. Mm -hmm. I started speaking mostly in church. When talk of challenges, the first challenge I experienced is 
you know, people don't believe you. Especially friends. Yeah. People you are with in the same school. Maybe some of them used to defeat you in class. Yeah. And you are telling them that you can inspire them. Inspire they say, oh, you need inspiration yourself. How do you inspire yeah. someone? <laughs> we know you, my friend. We know you, Ezekiel, in the first place. How can you inspire us? We know where you come from. Yeah. Yes, of course, you, you, we know how there's nothing. Where you come from, there's nothing. And you want to inspire. What do you want to inspire us? And, you know, sometimes when you're young and you want to inspire people, people ask, what experience do you have to inspire others? So, disbelief, people don't believe you, is one thing I really experienced. Yes, another thing, when you are starting, my friend, there's no income. So, you feel like you're really inspiring, but you are gaining nothing out of it. So, you're inspiring someone, and, you know, it is kind of an insult to your conscience. It is repelling with your conscience because you're inspiring, but you have nothing, my friend. After inspiring people, you even have nothing to eat. So, it was serious challenge because for a number of years, I was not earning anything. After some while, now people would invite me, at least give me something. Then it reached a point, corporates would now invite me to speak to their employees and I would earn nothing. And I can assure you, I've lived with inspiration for quite some while. Yes. So, the challenges are basically people not believing you when you're starting? Yes, people not believing you. Uh, I mean, that is it, my friend. And uh, no income. Yeah. Yes. So, at, at this point in life, do you sit down once in a day or once in a while? You look behind and say, I achieved something, I achieved something here and there and there. Now, okay, checking very well, I have not even achieved a quarter of a quarter of what I want. I've not, I can't say I've achieved anything. But now, what keeps me going, that keeps motivating me, is the response I get from people. You know, my videos go, uh, if you check my YouTube channel, that is Kelly Inspiration, most of my viewers are from US, uh, followed by UK. Someone sending a message and telling you that your message has really changed my life. I needed this message at this time. You feel energized, you feel motivated. I have Kenyans, a number of Kenyans have sent me messages because before I used to, I used to despite my videos with my phone numbers, so people would tell me how much my videos have impacted them and I would feel very happy. And that kept on motivating me to record more videos. Yes, yes, yes. Um, going to something different. You see, uh, we've read stories from many motivational speakers. Most of them have told us about their lives. So, me, I want to learn first, first and from a motivational speaker. How is your day? What time do you wake up? What do you do during the day? What should you do or should you not do as a motivational speaker? Well, you know, if I tell you my life is very rigid, that I, this is what I do on a daily basis, and like this, I would be lying. But you know, they sometimes depend. For example, maybe, but normally, I wake up at six. Normally, but I sleep late. Of course, I sleep at around, you know, twelve onwards. Uh, I wake up and I pray. That is what I do normally. That is, that is something I do. I pray. After praying, I must learn something in the morning. That's one thing I do. I've, con I've conditioned my mind to do so. Either a video I downloaded of another speaker, yeah. or I read something. But normally, I have to read something in the morning. Then I take time to meditate. Most of the videos I record, I get a skeleton idea. Just a an idea comes to my mind in a very skeleton way. Then when I sit down and meditate, that is when I get the depth of the information. So meditation is one thing. So after that, maybe around 10 or something, that is when I can now move out, you know, to, uh, you know, to do one or two things in the, in the day. But a day when I have an event, I have to wake up in the morning, pray, dress and leave and come back in the evening. So it depends on how the day looks here. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, well, that's basically what everyone does. Exactly. But, uh, well, hearing that from a motivational speaker means I'm doing something right with my life. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, so what, what, what motivates you? I'm sure maybe there's something that keeps you moving. Maybe there's something that tells you, like, um, I have to motivate that person. I have to speak to that person. What motivates you? Why do you care so much about motivational speaking and inspiring people? Now, my friend, uh, number one, there is, I, I feel serious fulfillment. 
the, the, the statement I like most in my life is that Ezekiel, what you told me changed my perspective. Or what you told me made me to change, you know, the way I view things. I mean, uh, made me to revise my choices. I like that statement because I feel my words are transforming some of the positive. Now, apart from that, what I do is, is like a calling. It's like you, I can't be comfortable if I don't do it. Yeah. It's a burden. Yeah. For example, if I take a whole week without recording a video or maybe speaking somewhere, I feel like I have not done anything. Do you know if I don't do anything but just write some powerful message, I feel I've done something. Yeah. So apart from the fulfillment, and apart from also the economic aspect, because now I live out of it. People invite me to speak. I live from speaking. I, I eat from my mouth. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. There is that push, the, that push, that the natural push, that pushes me always to do it. Yeah. Yes, you can't explain it, but it just comes by itself. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And also, you know, I like reading a lot. I read a lot of books. I listen to many speakers. Sometimes, sometimes you get an information that you feel I need to share this with the people. Yeah. Then you package it differently and add something to it. Yeah. And that is how it comes. Okay. Yes. Um, you told us that you did a degree in BCom. Yes. So we've seen in people in different industries telling us that, uh, well, my parents were so happy when I went to campus, but I didn't do what I went. I went to study. I'm a musician. They didn't support it. So. When you started doing this, how were your parents reacting? Did they support you or did they tell you to make a shule your fees lazimo kazi? Now, to start with my brother, when I was in form two, yeah. I would be given school fee to go and pay by myself in the bank. And whenever I went to the bank, I would admire the bankers. You know, the gentlemen, the way they are well dressed with their ties balancing well. The ladies, they are sharp looking with their hair well made. And especially when they're looking at them through the, you know, through that, that, that glass. Oh, they look like they're living heaven on earth. So I made up my mind from that time I wanted to be an accountant whatsoever. So I went and asked my business teacher, what can I do to be an accountant? Then he told me, just work hard, go to university, do become a specialized in accounting and also do CPAs. So from form two, I kept on praying that father, please allow me to go and do become. That was my major prayer and it came to pass. I went to KU and did become. So then reaching third year, like I told you, I left, ac I left accounting and went for good government and that. So I, I started speaking and truth be told, parents from home, ah, they asked me, Ezekiel, why can't you go and do what you did in school? Then I told them, I want to I want to speak. But they told me, speaking what? What are you speaking? They told me, we wait. By the time I'm through, you people will realize I had a vision. So, my dad is quite understanding. I appreciate him so much. John Abango Dongo, I appreciate him so much. He told me, okay, fine, go ahead. Uh, I know if you think it's good for you, then you'll prosper in that area. So, he left me and kept on motivating me. And at least right now, he's seeing the fruits of the vision I had. John Abango Dongo, your son is so proud of you and we are proud of what you've done. So going on, um, I'm sure you told us that uh, you now eat your mouth, you, you earn from yes, yes, yes. speaking. I, I, I eat with my mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yes. You eat with your mouth, yes, but you eat because you speak, right? Figuratively. Figuratively. Yes. So um, I, I, if, if um, let's say I wanted to be a motivational speaker. Yes. What should I do? Are there books I should read? Uh, is there a certain kind of a lifestyle that I should have? Um, what expectations should I have in terms of income? Now, truth be told, number one thing that will keep you in this industry is passion. Because passion will drive you uh, through the vicissitudes of life because they will come. Like I, talk, I talked of finances. Yeah. A time will come, my friend, you have the message to speak, yeah. but there's no audience. Yeah. I'll get in that. And the only available audience is free audience. Yeah. So you have nothing completely. And you can easily lose hope, then you go and do business. I thought, I had second of thoughts many times. 
In fact, many times I wanted to drop. My videos are going viral and I don't have anything in my pocket. I'm like, what kind of thing is this? So passion must drive you. So once you have the passion, then you have to, because what the thing is this, God chooses you the way you are, but never uses you the way you are. You have to, he has to transform you. I'm getting that. Now, you are, you, are, you are born gifted, but you have to become ready. You have to prepare yourself. So you have to read. Reading is a must. Because if you don't read, then you'll be redundant. You same information every now and again. So for you to be new every now and again, you have to read. That's a must. Yeah. Then you must speak. You must uh, be what you speak. If you, you are saying this and you're doing the other thing, my friend, you'll fade off very quickly. And you see people fading off, even pastors. Yeah pastors that preach water and drink wine they fed up very quickly so you must make up your mind i want to do what i speak yes that's that that has to be a principle okay. exactly yeah. and with that you last okay. the passion will keep driving you until one day it will drive you into your prosperity okay. that's what i believe thank you uh, so you've been in this for a while now yes. we know that now you have a lot of experience so what i like your plans in the next five years do you plan to maybe start um, mentoring people or uh, future future inspirational speakers or maybe start in schools or academies to help people become uh, motivational speakers or is it that it's is it just passion should i be passionate about motivational speaking if i want to be a motivational speaker or could i go to a motivational speaker who would mentor me into it well, to start with, I already have mentees, people who are mentoring. Yes, some of them are, most of them, some of them are Kenyans, some of them are not Kenyans, so we meet online here and there. But talking of an, an academy, that is something for sure, I will do that. Uh, when you talk of five years, uh, I want to be doing what I'm doing on a serious, large scale. I want to meet more audience globally. I want to meet more audience globally, traveling to speak in various places. Yes. Uh, what was the other question? It was, um, should I just be passionate about oh, motivational okay. speaking or... Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Apart from the passion itself, you must have mentors. Yeah. Check even in the Bible, all these great people they talk about, all of them had mentors. Elisha had a mentor who was Elijah. Yeah. Uh, Timothy had a mentor who was Paul and so on and so forth. A mentor is a shortcut. Distance. So I'm sure when you started shooting videos, probably you didn't have the equipment. You were using maybe mobile phones. So were you sharing those on WhatsApp or, or something, sharing those with your friends before maybe getting a YouTube channel? And how did you get it? Now, uh, truth be told, if you check most of <coughs> most of my, if you may you may not know, but most of my videos are recorded with my phone. Ah, uh, and I'll give a reason for that. Many times people pose, you know, lack of finances as a hindrance to whatever they want to do. I never wanted that to be an excuse. When I started recording videos, I never had the phone I'm using right now. I, I used to, I was having actually a kabambe. But I would ask, I would, you know, ask friends to record with their phones, then upload for me. Then I also go, go, go either go to the cyber or get someone's phone to check how many views. I'll get in that. So I started by sharing these videos to various WhatsApp groups. I, and my, of course, I started having uh, Facebook a long time ago. Yeah. Then after that, I thought, why not open a YouTube channel? Then I opened a YouTube channel and started, uh, you know, putting them. It took a while before, people, uh, before I had subscribers, but at least they started subscribing in that manner. No. Yes, yes. Okay. So, um, like I said, I've watched a, a number of your videos, actually a lot of them. I've also realized that uh, you are an actor. Yes. I've, seen, I've seen you in scenes with uh, the likes of YY, yes. the likes of DJ Shitty. So, so you're still a, an actor as well, like you just told us. So, uh, how is acting and motivational speaking? Like, how do you mix the two? Yes, how I mix the two is answered by my videos using illustrations i am an actor i am very passionate about acting i like it because i started acting in church church drama and then every time i was acting people would be very happy then i said wow this is something i can do so people advised me including my mentor told my friend you can earn out of this place find somewhere to something something to do about it yes i'm doing a program with dj shiti that is uh, 
sinema za DJCT and um, acting as teacher Kelly is a, is a very serious teacher. There is no one that speaks English in that scene and is someone that is very strict. Yeah, so I'm acting that part. My wife is a friend. We come from the same place. We studied at KU together. We've gone through stuff with YY. And so we do a lot of things with him. Uh, so sometimes, he's, you know, we do a few clips with him here and there. And many other artists too are friends outside there. Yes, so acting is something I do. Yes. So uh, YY is your friend. So what's your, what's your relationship with uh, DJ Shiti? DJ Shiti, my friend, the story is long. But uh, there was some time when, when YY just entered church life, when KU with him, yeah. he was having a house. I mean, he was, having, he was living in Car West. Mm. I didn't have a house. I didn't have a hostel. So I was living with YY. Mm. DJ Shiti then had nothing. Okay. He never had a house. So all of us were living at YY's place. Okay. So that is how we met, you know, struggling in life together. Yeah. So we started, we were living together with DJ Shiti and YY until various doors opened. And of course DJ Shiti is now a great man in Kenya right now. And YY is also a great man in Kenya right now. So that is how we started from the scratch there. Okay. Yes, yes, so at least YY got a house before us and he accommodated us until we now contracted different bearings. Yes. So there are people you've basically uh, struggled with to, to start life and stuff. My friend is not a joke. It is not a joke. We started from there. Yes, when one if one person gets others eat. Yes. Uh, so uh, moving on, Kelly Inspiration is a big brand now, and it's still growing. Do you have a management team, or how do you manage yourself? Uh, well, I still manage myself. I still manage everything myself.